This is Twit. Leo, remember how we've been talking about thin clients on every show yeah, recently? Yeah, yeah, And you know, I yeah. kept saying, you know what, that sounds really good, but like, when is that ever going to happen? Yeah. You know when it's going to happen? When? Spring 2021. Really? They announced thin clients? Uh, oh, no, no they didn't announce it. I announced, oh. I, announced <laughs> I helped them announce Thank it, you. okay? <laughs> so I got a tip um, late last week on something called Cloud PC, which I didn't know what it was. And so I went to the Microsoft job site and I just plugged it in for fun. And I'm like, you know what? That's not going to show up. Well, boom, Cloud PC. Cloud PC is a you new are offering such we are a building good reporter. on top of Windows Virtual awesome. Desktop to deliver desktop as a service. This is Microsoft's then client service, which I hear from my contacts. Spring 2021 is the target for the first iteration of this. Wow. This should be I an like, Ignite announcement. Yeah, <laughs> interesting timing given, given that Windows 10X, which we might also view as a, a thin client yep. of sorts, yes. is also set to debut at that exact exactly. time. Uh, exactly. Right? So, uh, right. So I what I hear about Cloud PC is Microsoft will charge a flat fee for it, a flat monthly fee, and that any Windows PC will be able to be a client for this. And I don't know if it also means phones like iOS and Android and Mac and Linux even will be thin clients, but I know Windows yeah. PCs will. So if you have an existing Windows PC, you don't even have to have a new one like a 10X PC, you'll be able to subscribe to the cloud PC service and it will oh, deliver wow. to your desktop as a desktop as a service kind of experience, oh. Windows, Office, your security updates and other types of applications. I'm not sure what else will show up there, but all virtualized. Your desktop. Can I do no, it on a Mac? Because that, that would be really that's what I don't so this is, amazing. This is the, we have to again we, speculation alley, right? So obviously, for this thing to make sense, it has to work on other clients as well, right? right? right. It right. should work over the web. It should work on Linux. It should work on the Mac. It should work on mobile. That's where it yeah. really makes sense. Now, on Windows, you would gain a, a, again without actually knowing how this works, right? And and with the understanding that there have been a uh, just a laundry list of solutions like yeah. this over the years for everything from the actual thin clients that Microsoft has worked on, the Windows based thin clients to remote desktop solutions like we have Windows virtual desktop today. Um, right. Back in the day, these things were delivered out of uh, corporate data centers. Today, they would be delivered typically over Azure from the cloud. But yep. <clears throat> we don't know. Uh, we don't really, we don't know. I mean, we just know what we know. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I would assume if you have a Windows PC that you would gain additional capabilities, the ability to install think. something that looks yep. like an app that is an app to you that's not a full desktop. Whereas if you're on an iPad, would you have that capability? Or maybe you'd have uh, a client that's a window, <laughs> you know. Into yeah. it. No, I mean, it's what a right. browser is. Maybe a browser. Right. Well, that's the thing. Bra Maybe an Actually, HTML5 browser, browser could do it. Sense. Yep, that's yeah. right. So, so the reason I think it will support other clients is if you look at what are the underpinnings of this service, it's Windows Virtual Desktop. Windows Virtual <coughs> Desktop works on the Mac, and it works right. on iOS, right. and it works on Android, right? right? So right. that makes me think it's going to work on those platforms. Also, is interestingly, the initial shipping version of Windows 10X will not support Win32 apps. Well, correct. This will be how this is how you get them onto that system, right? Right. And right. over time, assuming they bring this thing back, which I, I sort of feel like they will. I, I referred to the possibility that Windows 10X could be viewed as like the next NT because if this container-based system worked, then it should become what we think of as Windows because this system is safer and more secure. It's yeah. more reliable. Right. But you have the compatibility and performance issues. You got to kind of get over that hump. But if those things work. This is how Microsoft can separate itself from the legacy Win32 past. That's yeah. one way. But, you know, yeah. this is the other way, right? I mean, we just talked about this. We talked about thin clients and 5G coming and the ability to deliver apps from the cloud. Well, maybe that's another way to get I mean, well, no, it literally is another way. I think these things are two paths to the Me same too. destination. Yeah. Is actually sort so, of a, an article I wrote. But, yeah. <laughs> Also, no one should freak out about this, right? This oh, no. Is gonna By the way, everyone should freak out. It's all <laughs> changing. No. <laughs> no. So remember when we used to hear all these rumors yeah. about Microsoft, I mean, Windows 365, and people were like, oh, my God, Microsoft's going to make Windows a paid service. I don't want this. I want Windows on my desktop. I don't want to buy this. It's going to be an option. It's not going to be the only right. way that, you way, can uh, get that's Windows. So, <laughs> that's the sanest thing anyone's ever said. So. 
yeah. as enthusiasts, uh, we tend to get up in an uproar. You know, you'll get your, this full featured windows out of my dead cold hands, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the big difference between the, the way Microsoft does things and the way Apple does things, and we sort of view this as a negative. Remember about a month ago when Apple had their big announcement? You know, Microsoft does Windows 10 on ARM as a side project. Microsoft does Windows right. 10S as a side project. Microsoft yeah. will do Windows 10X as a side project. Um, these To Microsoft, these are all options. You know, yeah. it, that the people who need or want the full-featured Windows 10 desktop client, because they're gamers, because they're programmers, because they're architects Developer. or engineers or yeah. scientists or whatever they are, yeah. um, that will, that, of course, that will always be there. They'll never say yeah. goodbye to anything. But, no. you know, the, the, the hope is for Microsoft over time that more and more people can use these thin clients slash whatever they are, you know, future clients with this cloud service maybe. And that we kind of start stepping back from this legacy code yeah. um, and they can have a more modern platform. But they're not going to just flip a switch, you know. No. Um, that, that will never happen. It, no. it, and again, and this is, I would say, because I was a little negative about this with the Apple announcement. This is the positive side of that coin. Um, that Because as excited, look, you could dread this or you could be excited for it. But the thing you need to understand is. It's not going to just happen overnight, and it's not going to it's not going to destroy what we're already doing today. It does no, that does at, not go away. Look at Office for an example. Microsoft is yeah. still releasing Office 2019 as a separate standalone version that doesn't require a subscription. And the reason they're doing that is there are people who still want to buy that. And just the same way, there will still be yeah. people who want Windows preloaded on their machines and they don't want to have to think about do I need to like license Windows so that it's streaming or Office like how can I get this as a right. bundle like people just people want to have options and yeah, but, but things so, change. to your point and, and no, to your point though Microsoft is, is good at giving people lots of options and someday this will be the only option yes. but I, yeah, so someday. many years from now so many and think about now. the way music services have evolved. If you had an iPod uh, almost, actually almost 20, 15 years ago, you know, you would have used software on your PC or Mac to download song or have your own songs, burn CDs, and you had yep. your own music and you could copy it over to the device. You know, today, yep. most people just pay uh, uh, 10 bucks a month and they have, use a service like Apple Music or Spotify or whatever. And that's fine for most people. Someone like yep. me, who's kind of old school, I, I do have a bunch of m music that I ripped. Uh, millions of years ago, and some of it still isn't in the services. I need a service that has both. I'd like the yeah. streaming part of it for sure, but I also like to have my own stuff. And those are starting mm -hmm. to fall off, right? I mean, Amazon used to do it, it's gone. Uh, Apple yeah. still offers it, and Google still offers it. But Google's switching over to YouTube Music too, and that's about to change. I mean, we'll see what that what happens, but um, there'll be a transition period. And this, I think, yeah. is very common for technology. Um, we could probably make a bunch of other examples, but it. it it's not going to happen overnight. And, mm. you know, if you're uh, loving your copy of uh, Windows 8 <laughs> or something or Windows 10 and Office 2013 or 2016 or whatever it is you're still using because you're just never going to give that up. Yep. Um, God love you and whatever you can keep using that. Plus the support timelines on those or whatever they are. I mean, they'll be around for a while. Yeah.